agree. Thank you so much for standing up for really making the 120 feel special. Do you feel special, guys, sitting here? Give everyone a shout. They've been giving you a shout this entire time. Please just give everyone a shout. Thank you so much. So let's move on to the first item on our agenda today, the Forbes Africa interview. Now, this is going to be a powerful and exclusive conversation with one of South Africa's most powerful, most iconic entertainment icons and entrepreneur. I'm going to play a video because, I mean, as I was thinking about introing my personal role model, and they told me, listen, there's a video. I was like, this is, this is relief. So I'm, I'm going, not going to ask them to roll the video. And as the video plays, I'm going to ask the two people on the video to please come up for the Forbes Africa interview and for us to give them a huge hand as they do that. <laughs> South African multi-award winning radio host, TV presenter, MC, entrepreneur and style icon, Bonang Mateba is affectionately referred to by her fans as Queen Bee. She has firmly positioned herself as Africa's most sought after entertainment personality and essays social media darling. In May this year, Bonang won the coveted award for Best Inspiration and Influence at the prestigious Global Social Awards held in Prague in the Czech Republic. She is interviewed by award-winning media moderator Guguletum Fupi. Everybody and welcome to the Forbes Under 30 Meetup. Great to have you all here this morning. I think we need a louder round of applause, applause for our guest of honor this morning. Thank you. Indeed, many of us uh, do recall seeing Bonang on TV screens where she used to kla, kla mo, la, and entertain when it came to music dissemination and information across TV screens in South Africa. And over the years, has certainly managed to metamorphosize herself into a businesswoman with diversified interests. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a very interactive conversation session where we look to gain insight and really learn about the business mandate that is behind Queen Bee. We'd also like to welcome our audience who are joining us live via CNBC Africa on channel 410 on DSTV, as well as those joining us through Facebook, and of course, many of you on social media, probably streaming this live as well through various media platforms. Queen B, firstly, belated happy birthday to you. you. Fantastic Thank to you. have you here, and I think for many individuals, you're sitting here as a 32-year-old, not very old at all, but having accomplished so much within your lifetime, many of us might assume that you feel as though you might have peaked. Is that the case? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Um, I haven't peaked yet. No. I've, and uh, the thing is, you know, after peaking, you still want to peak more and more and more. Right. So there isn't the peak of all peakest. You know, I haven't arrived there yet. But uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm, I think I'm starting the harvest. Sort of. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because so often when we see individuals reaching certain levels of success, we think, okay, that's it. You're going to slow down. But let's fast track to a time where you used to have a clothing range with legit. Uh, and uh, at the time, it was appealing to an age group that you also could relate to. And when it occurred to you that as an artist and someone who works within the field of media, that you could commercialize your brand and really seek business opportunities over what or through what it is that you do. You mean when did I do that? When. When did I realize that I could commercialize? Um, it wasn't a decision that I made. I think when I started with Legit, that was the first time I realized, oh, wow, I can actually make lots and lots of money. I don't have to just be on television or be on radio. I can expand my brand and do other things. And I think that decision, well, came from, uh, you know, the people around me. They really directed me. Um, and... Yeah, a couple of years later, well, months later, there was, you know, legit. And it, it wasn't a conscious, you know, decision. I think somebody else helped me kind of 
get there and realize that right. so much more is possible. And that speaks to the spirit of partnership and the people that you tend to align yourself with. Are there any particular interesting business principles that you might have learned through the partnerships with individuals or with certain clients that you've worked with over the years? Business principles. Such as patience, uh, such as perhaps your visions being aligned as well. Because at times you might find that you partner with corporations or even individuals and your dreams and visions might be aligned or uh, the manner within which you look to conduct your business might not be the same. I try really to do things that I love and only things that I love because then it doesn't, you know, feel like I'm working or I'm at work or I'm like checking into work. And also it becomes a lot more easier, you know, just to kind of do my thing. When you love something, you just wake up in the morning and, you know, really do it. That's what I, I try to find in my partners or the people that I want to collaborate with is love, yeah. pure love. And that's it. Love for me, number one, and love for what it is we're doing and love for what it is we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And business principles, I, I don't really worry too much about that. That's for my manager to worry about. I just want... That's I an honest him. response, right? <laughs> exactly. It's his job, you know? But I, 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 I'm a more of a, of, a, of, a, of a love connection type person. Yeah. And I just, I just, I want... I, I, collaborate with things that are generally just feel authentic yeah yeah love connection and authenticity and of course uh, making sure that you are aligning to themes that really do speak to who you are as we get that water for you i do want us to talk about the brand that is bonang i think for anyone who has walked into the room many of you this has been the highlight for the program for today and you're looking forward to understanding how to build brand bonang and that's one thing that you've managed to do consistently over the years remaining relevant remaining top of mind and uh, indeed, it will be uncovered in our later conversations through panel discussions that will be held today. But let's talk building a brand. Because for many of us in the room, what do we do? We take a few selfies, throw in a few cute hashtags, and maybe even post your lunch, right? And you think that that might be enough to establish some kind of brand. <laughs> but you've gone a lot further than that. <laughs> building a brand is not easy. Yeah. It takes longer than a tweet. It takes longer than four years, sometimes 15. Yeah, of course. And what have been the secrets to your success in building your brand? Consistency and hard work and just consistency. I'd like you to, to, to tell us a little bit more about that because so often people feel like, oh goodness, I haven't been in this particular game for the past five years and now there are new competitors coming along. Yeah. How do I relate to this new market where perhaps there's a new offering that's available? Take your time with the water. We've got a good 20 minutes to go. <laughs> I would, you know, when it comes to brand building, and um, it's something that people need to kind of really, really pay attention to now. Because we're in the world of social media, and everybody is a personal brand. And how you um, conduct yourself on social media is becoming more and more and more important. How you conduct yourself in person is becoming more and more important. Because you are your own person, and from the get-go, you're your own, own brand. So how I did it was, I, I started at a very young age, 15, and I kind of, I said to myself, what is the one thing that I love to do that I can do every single day and then get somebody to pay me to do it? Sure. And then I found television pre presenting, and I said, well, I love to speak, I love to chat, I love, I love hearing my voice, I love, I've got a great personality, so why can't I be a TV personality? Yes. And I found a school, did a TV presenting course, and that's where it started. And then I moved, you know, from strength to strength, on and on and on. But it, it was a, it's a constant, constant, constant b sort of journey every single day. Number one, you have to determine who you are, then determine where you're going, and then determine how you're going to get there. Mm. That's all brand building is. And I think with, with the introduction of social media... It, we're going to, it's going to have to be a little bit more important to everybody now. Yeah, like all the time. I don't know if that makes sense. It, it certainly yeah. does. And I think a critical lesson that we also want to take away from the audience is in making sure uh, uh, that uh, your, your brand is front and center of the growth opportunities that you're seeking and the partnerships that one looks to develop, that you build that sense of sustainability. Absolutely. What's, what's the future plan for Bonang in, in building new brands and building new development and exploring new opportunities? The future is to go global, to go, you know, all across the continent to... 
uh, grow as much as you can and see how much more you can do. You know, with the introduction of my new company, BNG, it's opened me up to so many spaces and places. And uh, the goal is just to try and get it to as many spaces as possible. I don't know if that makes sense. But that, that is it. Consistency and growth, I think that's what everybody wants ultimately. Yeah. Consistency and growth, certainly something that everybody wants and looking as to how best we can attain that. I, I want to gauge from a view from the audience because I know a lot of them are, are significant fans of your work uh, and many of them have participated with various products. But by show of hands, uh, if many of you can indicate when you uh, might have first interacted with any of Bonang's commercial brands, whether it be an app, whether it be clothing, right? That would be a good gauge for you as well. Revlon, by show of hands, any of you who might have interacted with many of her products? Okay, the room is a bit dark. The reality show, come on. Don't act like you don't know the whole. <laughs> Bafe. Give the people what they want, Bonang, right? That's exactly what we're here for. And I do want to align that, that individuals interacting with your brand speaks to market research and, of course, the insight that you receive there. How has that worked for you and how do you manage that given that you have so many diversified interests? In other words, making sure, exactly, making sure that the markets or the products and the brands that you align with, the new product launches that you have, actually do speak to the audience following that you have. And I think with House of b and we've certainly seen that with the repost of stories that you yeah, have. Yeah, how do I make sure? I mean, once again, your team. It's, it's just what I love. And I find if I love something, and I love it generally, people will fall in love with it too, you know? Um, and I do what I love. I choose the things that I love. I... Um, participating things that I love and I and I think that just becomes a, a general um, you know sort of spreading of positivity I guess I just I, I don't know how to answer that I just you know just generally just do what I love and I uh, v vibrate towards you know the things that I love and I it's just yeah, that's it. Exactly. You know, it's very simple. And I why guess. I mentioned that interaction is because a lot of your feedback has also come from international markets. And in the room, we've got leaders from across the continent here who are in their respective fields and really trying to align and build that global network. Mm -hmm. So often we hear politicians talk about globalization, but we're making it happen here in the room. Mm -hmm. And that's the theme and element that I want us to delve into. The power of building your brand, the sustainability, and aligning with feedback, not only in South Africa, the continent, and even the world. Mm -hmm. So much so that you also manage to uh, interact with individuals who might not be from sectors mm -hmm. that would be traditionally in entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, but how, how do you see yourself building up further from that? And are there particular lessons that we can learn? Building up from? Local relevancy mm -hmm. to becoming a global brand. How do I build on that? Yeah, and essentially what we're looking for is the lessons that, you've, uh, that you can impart with the audience. In other words, tell us about your first time you went to Nigeria and the audience knew you. Did that take a certain level of um, having to build up a rapport with that particular market? And if so, how did you do that? It is... Um, how do you do that? I think that's time. And, you know, I, and once again, consistency. And uh, a plan. You know, when I, uh, when I started... Um, kind of growing outside of South Africa, it was a strategic plan. You can't do anything without a plan. You, you don't know where you're going if you don't have a plan. So the first thing that we did was strategically write things down and say, this is what we want to do, this is how we're going to do it, and this is how long it's going to take us to get there. And once you have that, that's it. Implement, Na right? Absolutely. Nigeria, same thing. It was, a, it was a conscious decision. I said to my team, I want to now expand out of South Africa and see what else I can do. Um, and it is, whether you align yourself with certain brands or you go into, however you, way you get there, it, is, it was just a strategic decision. When I got there and I realized, oh, people knew me. It's a great, it, is a, it was a great feeling, you know. Um, and it was a, a feeling of, thank goodness what we're doing is... is, is it's happening. We're seeing it. You know, it's it's uh, it's coming to fruition. So, yeah. I guess. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. One thing about your success is that it's celebrated in public. And uh, given that you are a media personality, you also have to unfortunately endure some of the pressures of potential failures or mistakes that you also have to enjoy in public. What's been the, been the biggest lesson that has actually strengthened you to manage both and take them on the chin? Oh, honey, I have lessons every single day. <laughs> <laughs> every single day, every single day there's a lesson. How do I take those lessons 
Is that what your question was? Or what are those lessons that or you what can are share those with us? Because that I as we share. know, self-esteem and confidence is very well aligned to your business engagement, right? And when you're constantly hearing no, you're not enough, that can knock a lot of individuals to actually pull back from their dreams and implement them. But how do you keep going? Um, there is um, a lot of strength in knowing yourself, number one, and being honest with yourself and being true to yourself and being authentic, I think, with yourself. That's who you need to start with. You need to be very, very, very honest. I think before you're honest with other people, you need to be honest with yourself. Be honest in terms of how good you are, how, how good you are, how bad you are, how, whatever it is, number one. Always, always be honest with yourself. Number two, always be kind to yourself. That's what human beings tend to forget. You know, mm -hmm. people are very hard on themselves. They expect too much from themselves too soon, right? So that's another lesson that I've learned. Another lesson that I've learned is you have to respect time, right? We live in, a, in, a ta in an era of like instant gratification. Yeah. And we have forgotten sort of like the value of time, the value of hard work, the value of like respecting time. Time makes things better. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Wine, emotions, problems, time makes things better. And I think if you um, can respect time and give time time to do its thing, that's perfect. Another lesson that I learned is that People have things to do. You're, you're not anyone's priority. So get that out of your head. Mm. Right? No one owes you anything. This delusions of grandeur and self-entitlement needs to stop because no one has to wake up to help you do anything, sweetheart. Sure. That's a lesson that I wish somebody had told me when I was 15. That it's on no you. one is actually going to do anything for you. Not even your mother has to do anything for you. And I think it's a lesson. The sooner you kind of you know, I make peace with that. that, the better. Another lesson that I've learned is that mm, be smart with money, mm. save money, <laughs> and also respect money, but also respect people. Um, who you work with right now you might not know where they'll be in five years. Respect the connections you make, the interactions you make, yeah. the connections you make, the, remember the people you meet. And um, in, in, in Suzulu, there's a, a saying, that, Unga don't Say it ever, in Suzuana as well. Yes. Don't undermine people. Because mm. the person that you undermine today could be the CEO of a company you want, might want to work for in two years. Yes. That's how life works. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Very critical points that have certainly been highlighted here, Bonang. I'm going to stretch it slightly with by asking you just two more questions. And I think it's also important that whilst you've gained so much success, as you've alluded to, there are failures, but failures that you manage as well. And so often when we start businesses and entities, we get overwhelmed, right? Because you need to register the business. Then you end up doing some work and you realize, oh goodness, there needs to be tax compliance, a BE affidavit, uh, and many other uh, paperwork that also needs to be sorted out. And you've managed to do that in a respectable manner, despite some of the uh, criticism that that you might have faced there. What was the biggest lesson that you learned uh, with regard to uh, the challenges of compliance uh, when it came to some of your businesses in South Africa? Oh man, there's so many. I mean, the tax man's one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love SARS, don't oh. we? Oh, darling, pay your taxes. That's two things. That, that's two things you're gonna. Especially that, in this new age where you can yeah, make money from so many different things. two things that are definitely gonna. You're going to die, and you're going to pay taxes. Yes. So, I mean, this, I mean, just pay SARS. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, all right? That's the one lesson that I learned. Um, and what I, what I learned about that is that you, the more you know about money, the smarter you become. And then you become, and the, the, how you make it becomes not easier, but you navigate it easier. When you know more or know better, you probably do better. Yes. When you arm yourself with knowledge, you know better. And when you have knowledge, you become more confident in whatever it is. 
money, relationships, people, work, jobs. So know everything you have to know about whatever world you want to get into. Arm yourself with knowledge. It will give you, number one, confidence, yes. right? And it will give you, obviously, clarity. So definitely, that's one lesson I learned. The more you know, the, the better you will do, especially with, with tax, compliance, all of that. I also, with my companies, realize that you will fail. But you need to fail spectacularly. It needs to be the most fabulous failure in the world. Yeah. Right? Because failure is it's, it's a constant. It's going to be there. In whatever it is that you do, you are, you, every, every single person will fail. And what I enjoy about, you know, well, maybe only now, I'm like, thank goodness that I've be, I failed spectacularly in front of people and it's been so well documented because then younger people will see that it happens. It's going to happen. It will happen to anybody all the time. The, it, it, you know, how you bounce or how you kind of... Um, react from that failure is the true definition of your character. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, Nang, it's been an absolute pleasure Thank engaging you. with Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank I was you. going to squeeze one in if you're still planning to buy that vineyard, but I'd say surprise us. What if it's already there? Oh. Boom. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, award-winning media personality and successful businesswoman, not only South African, pan-African and truly global, Bonang Mateba. A great pleasure. Thank you so much.